I wanted to share probably one of the most amazing success stories that I ever heard. Okay, and this has to do with a man by the name of Michael who accidentally was saved by not eating for four days. Okay, that's what he said. Last year I was hospitalized by an ambulance when I mysteriously started going blind. An undiagnosed diabetic with a blood sugar of 700 milligrams per deciliter. Now, normal blood sugars are 80, okay? 700 is so far off the chart, um, it is so dangerous, it's incredible, he, he survived. The paramedics struggled to get a vein and I was going into a coma. 150 kilograms, 330 pounds, obese, alcoholic, clinically depressed, sick, sore, rattled with meds, and suicidal. At New Year's, I decided to simply give up and lay down and die. In not eating for four days, I strangely didn't start to die, but actually started feeling better, stronger, and happier. I tripped across Dr. Berg's fasting video, then the penny dropped. The standard Aussie diet was killing me. I've been lied to and food manipulated my entire 56 years. I've now lost 50 kilograms, that's 110 pounds, do not drink, have reverse diabetes, take no medications, fitter, healthier, productive, lively, positive, have a full-time job, and most importantly, I am happy. Finding keto and Dr. Berg really has quite literally saved my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, from the bottom of my now healthy heart. Amazing, amazing success story. With that, let's do a chat with Michael right now. Well, it's definitely a pleasure to meet you too. Your success story was mind blowing. I was like, someone showed it to me. I was like, what the? So I just wanted to, you know, casually talk with you, chat with you and, and uh, just hear it yeah. from you. What happened? Um. Oh, look, how long have you got? Like, it's a life story like everyone else, isn't it? But um, to keep it concise, um, I think everybody ends up being depressed and diabetic for a basket of reasons, and, and that basket ends up being a case. But um, after a 20-odd-year career of um, high stress, really high stress um and i worked as a fifo flying flight what you guys i think call remote workers um i was never really based anywhere i used to work things like um a month on and a week off so i was always in camps and things like that um and so never really grounded always on the move never far from my backpack and um the thing with those industries is you have food supplied right and it works on the typical food triangle and in the u.s i'm sure it's the same as ours carbs on top you know <laughs> fat on the bottom uh low salt you know the, you, the typical thing that we all know about now and um that slowly in hindsight slowly led to a demise and with the constant stress pressures and then the lifestyle that came with that, divorces, property settlements, alimony, I think you guys call it, um, that basically ended up bankrupting me. And um, that added financial stress to my life, even though I was earning mid, mid triple fig, mid six digits, I ended up with bugger all of that. And so I found myself high stress, long hours, high pay, nowhere to live, no real money of my own. It was a bit of a crazy thing. That all ended up culminating in somewhat of what I suppose you could call a nervous breakdown, mm. in essence. And um, I um, ended up just going, no, I can't do this anymore, and I just stopped. I had some money behind me, and I just stopped working. Without really noticing it set in, I ended up um, basically locking myself in a room, for the best part, self-isolating before there was even a word. Wow. And um, as much as I love to cook, I was cooking the SAD stuff and lots of mashed potato gravy, all the yummy gear, right? Um, still along with a lot of veg and, you know, decent meat and whatnot. But that combination of 
carbs and fat, as we all know, doesn't work. Right? And so I had these incremental weight gains, right? just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, uh, year after year. Mm. Um, and it wasn't until one day I was in a CBD and I spotted myself in the automatic doors of a multi-story building and thought, wow, I'm a keg on legs. Like, when did wow. this really happen? Wow. And um, I thought, hmm, hmm, I don't like the look of that. But I'm not completely, I'm not very egotistical or superficial, and I think my fireman calendar of the year days are well and truly past me. So I wasn't too concerned about it. And um, and I was still getting by, and um, in my career I went higher and higher in management, so I was doing less physical activity outdoors. And, um, and what I did do, I could get through okay because it was limited and... Um, then the depression set in, um, I, in hindsight, didn't realize that I've been depressed for a very long time, just bad life basically. Mm. And as much as having the Porsches and the beachfront condo and all the rest of it looks fabulous to everyone else, mm. um, from the inside out, it's not so great. And in my case, and the, um, and I thought, well, I don't, I don't need any of that. And I um, was occasionally, strangely, I was occasionally testing my blood sugars. A friend of mine was diabetic, type 1. And so when I'd visit him, I'd just play with the machine and have a test. And my numbers were coming back mid-level, standard SAD person. Right? Nothing to be really concerned about. Hmm. And um, I thought, oh, that's surprising, considering I live on... Um, Jamaican rum and a very well-known cola uh, and wasn't au fait to a, the odd drive through takeaway from, you know, the king, the clown or the colonel. And um, um, then slowly I started um, with, with the whole falling down thing physically, um, all of a sudden I started to become constantly thirsty. Mm. Like, um, and this accelerated really, really quickly where I was, I was drinking oh, easy 10 liters, a couple of gallons of <laughs> fluid. And wow. it was just in and out, in and out. It was just like a transfer station for fluid. Yeah. And I thought, this is getting a bit weird and just constantly thirsty. Mm. And I thought, hmm, around the same time, not, not too long after that, um, I popped out my front door, looking down the street, and I realized all of a sudden that things I could read yesterday, I couldn't read today. Um, signs, numbers on letterboxes and whatnot. Everything was starting to go a bit hazy and a bit blurry. And I thought, mm, your eyesight goes down over time, but uh, not overnight. So I thought I'll pop to the local clinic and see a GP. And um, he went, oh, okay, did a blood test and went, um, dude, <laughs> you've got numbers of like, you guys working on decimal 740. Yeah. Gosh. And um, I'm like, oh, okay, is that a bad thing? And so he goes, yeah. Um, and I said, uh, dude, you're going to go into a coma. And I went, okay, well, I'll get myself down to hospital. I'm going to pop home and, you know, pack a bag for hospital and let's go. And uh, I said, what do I have to look out for with this whole coma thing? He went, mate, you won't know. You'll just fall into a coma, okay? <laughs> and there's no going home. The ambulance is on its way, dude. Oh and I, <clears throat> okay. Here's me still a little bit like oblivious to this, so like, in hindsight, duh. And climbed into the uh, ambulance and our paramedics, I imagine very much like yours, amazing people, angels, right? And um, he's trying to get blood. It's not coming. Uh, it's turned to treacle. You can't get veins and getting slapped and tourniquet and it's uh -huh. going on and on. Then um, paramedics have this amazing way of not showing concern. Yeah. You know, they'll, right. they'll just keep chatting to you about random stuff, football or whatever, right? And um, while they're doing their job, um, I know we started to get concerned when A, I had a defibrillator strapped to me and 
uh, when he asked the um, the driver, how far are we from the hospital? And she said, oh, eight minutes. And he said, can we make it six? I thought, um, okay. Um, we have a thing here called ramping. Um, too many ambulances roll up at once. And so they ramp, they get stacked, a bit like aeroplanes. I ended up getting gurneyed straight past everyone, straight into ER. And um, yeah, and that's when they put me on bags and all sorts of things and whatnot. And uh, that's when the seriousness of the whole thing sort of set in. And um, they got my numbers down pretty quick, down to about half of that, about 350 or something. But then, bless their hearts, they kicked me out. <laughs> and um, I, uh, at that point, was yeah, given the standard two medications for diabetics and um, a couple of other odds and sods. My blood pressure was through the roof. If my car had the same pressure, the oil pressure, I'd be pretty happy with it, but not in a human body. And the, um, so I was basically just sent home on my own merry way. Um, then um, I ended up uh, inadvertently breaking my ankle. Um, Survived two helicopter crashes and a couple of car rollovers. I trip over a garden chair and break my ankle. Go figure. Ended up back in hospital. Um, same thing in the ambo in, in the ambulance. Do a blood test. Must be a standard thing, right? And they went, oh, your numbers are like serious, man. Like I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, in hospital, while I'm waiting around with my broken ankle, um, they're feeding me toast. Fruit juice, milk. I I saw a um I saw a bit of yours recently on how you know hospital food isn't let's just say the best. And I think you're like, what's with this people? I can't eat any of this stuff, right? Like, just bring me a lettuce from the anorexic department or something. Right, you know? right. Um, and uh, they really didn't want to know about it when um when I was chatting to the doctors, going, okay, ankle. It's a broken bone. I've had many. It'll fix itself. It's not a big deal. And but this diabetes thing, um, I want to treat that. No, you're not here for that. You're here for an ankle. If you want to treat your diabetes, go see your local GP. Okay. Then they kicked me off what they have as their um, diabetic menu, which <laughs> isn't awesome anyway. Because it must have been too much trouble or something. I don't know. But um, ended up leaving there, and yeah, things still went downhill from there. My depression got worse. Um, COVID in Australia happened in a wave and I ran away from COVID, not because I was scared of it, it was because it, it screwed with jobs and accommodation and all sorts of things. Um, and I ended up finding this, um, where I am now, this gorgeous place on the seaside on the southern coast of Australia. And, um, I'd got rid of a lot of the stresses in my life and everything else. And I had no reason to be unhappy. I was still terribly depressed and, and depression isn't a state of mind. It's almost like a disease, an illness, a sickness, or something. Um, it, and I don't know. A lot of things culminated, and I ended up just going like, ah, oh, screw it. Like, um, I really just gave up and laid on my bed, basically, for like four days. And um, I'm a smoker and an addicted one. It's the only vice I have left, but um, normally I couldn't go a few hours without a cigarette. I'll start just getting the craves, you know, as an addict. And, um, yeah, I was, I was that depressed. I couldn't even be bothered going to get cigarettes and um, for as much as I was craving them. And what I thought was a bit weird was um, after about three days, I started to feel better. Right, when the exact opposite, life's like this, the exact opposite of what I was trying to achieve, which was to basically just, I don't know, somehow just stay on my bed till I don't wake up anymore, right? right. And um, all of a sudden I thought, hmm, a bit hungry, but I'm not actually hungry. I think I'm hungry, but I'm not. How weird is this? Four days. Normally I couldn't go four hours without eating something, right, right. as we all right. used to do was drummed into us, you know, eat every, you know, eat three square meals a day and then have something every two hours in between that and all the rest of it. 
and um, I was pretty used to that sort of thing and snacking a lot as we did, you know. And um, so I thought, well, what's what's with this? Um, that's when I tripped. That's when I had started having a bit of a look at the whole um, fasting thing, and it, then it dawned on me. I saw something twenty years ago on Indian yogis. I think they are. Um, and they were sitting on a beach for like a week and all they ate was butter and yogurt and they lost weight, right? And they're pretty healthy looking dudes. And I thought, well, what's with that? Right. So I started looking into it. I tripped across one of your videos on, um, on fasting. And then what really got me interested was the um, fatty liver and... Um, inflammation mm. and a friend of mine is quite a healthy person and um she um she used to bang on at me about inflammation but i didn't get it i i related inflammation to things like rheumatoid arthritis inflamed joints and things of that nature not having an inflamed body or organs so once that penny dropped and the fasting thing and a lot of other research and luckily keto's been studied a lot by scientifically. Um, the results, you know, Kellogg's hate it, but the um, but it makes sense. There's there's a lot of fact there that you can't deny, right? And right. It's not a mystery. It's um, and uh, I just thought, oh, well, this is a bit strange. Okay, well, I'll um, I'll lay off of the this and the that, and I actually like whole foods. So let's just give this a go for a little while. And all of a sudden, um, in a very, very short period, within a couple of weeks, um, I had this epiphany. I think drunks call it a moment of clarity. And um, lots of pennies dropped. Like, I feel better because I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And I found keto for me is extremely extremely easy. It's one of the easiest things I've ever done in my life. Um, because it's more about instead of doing things, it's about not doing things. <laughs> right. Right? right. So um I found being lazy by nature, um keto suited me perfectly because it was more about don't stick things in your mouth. Um <laughs> and the um and the things you do, be aware of what they do. And quite quickly my numbers plummeted down to, um, I was averaging low fives, which for you guys is, I don't know, about, what, 90 or 100 or something in that area. Yeah. And that's when I really saw the difference. And um, then I started feeling better. Then all of a sudden, I noticed that I was happier. Wow. Was happier. Wow. And things that, I used to be quite angry at the world, like, not um, not outwardly, but internally, I would look at things and I would just get angry about it, you know, mm. and spent most of my life trying to fix fix the world and some of the people in it. And um, and I thought, no, 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 no. All you can do is your own little bit and start with yourself. You, like the old adage, you can't help anyone if you can't help yourself. And um, but the biggest thing for me with keto was um, the um, uh, the mental side of it, the mm -hmm. mental health side of keto, and then the weight loss was just a complete byproduct of that. I found that completely amusing, to be honest. Uh, and I never focused on. I just tried to keep my blood sugars down in a decent region, and um, and my ketones somewhere at least have some, and um, and just get about with my daily life. And from there, everything is just snowballed in a fantastic way that I was losing what the medical profession would call unhealthy amounts of weight, like really fast. Um, and the um, um, now I've um, I found my bloods uh, in the, I average about 4.8, mm -hmm. about 80 or something, you guys. Um, my weight loss is um, still going down. It's a bit negative logarithmic. It's not as fast as it used to be. 
Mm -hmm. um, but my ketones vary between 0 0.5 and 3, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I find when my blood sugars go up and down a little bit or my ketones go up and down a little bit, I physically can't actually notice that. It doesn't seem to make any difference in my day-to-day -day life. But now I just have so much energy and the whole depression thing went away. The negativity went away. So now I'm a big proponent in um, when healthy body, healthy mind, not that I'm a health nut by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But I noticed just getting, dealing with the fatty liver, which then in turn deals with everything else just all by itself. Um, and, um, and the inflammation side of things, I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is um, your brain is an organ just like your liver. When you get a fatty brain, things get foggy and Funny thing I've, I hear when people say, oh, you know, the keto fog, mm. my life was like that. Like, mm. um, I found it, before keto, I found it very difficult to, or increasingly more difficult to compartmentalize problems in life. Mm. It all just sort of got thrown into one big casserole dish. Mm -hmm. And that became overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> um, whereas with keto, um, all of a sudden, and I, I only noticed this after the after the event. Um, things that before were I just couldn't be bothered. Like I'd left something in my car, and my car was only fifty feet away. So I just can't be bothered getting that. Seriously, you know? now it's, I don't even think about it. I just grab my keys, go get it, come back. Right? Um, load the dishwasher or unload the dishwasher. I'll just do it later. You know? Now I see it. I just do it. it takes wow. Like, what, a minute. It's I mean, before it. Oh my God, it just sounds like, you know, um, there was this uh, kind of disconnect initially with the depression, not really connected to your body. And then you find this huge realization, oh my gosh, my depression has been, my physical body has been so far out of balance that it put me in a certain lower emotional state, which then makes your whole universe completely um, dismal, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, yep. all these yep. thoughts. And then you, you pull yourself out of this thing. You, with, the, with the most important thing you could do, you happen to do it. You start switching over the fuel source to ketones. Starts mm. feeding your brain. Starts, And then that just brings your emotions right up to where you are normally, where you should be normally. And now all of a sudden you're, you're back to yourself. It's like, it's yeah. wow. And, um, and I haven't, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I realize I've been like SAD. Um, not both diet and emotionally, um, for a very, very long time. Like I'm 56 now, and it's probably been since I was in my early 20s. Mm. You know? um, I did get to a point because of my depression, I got put on antidepressants. Mm. Um, the name of those products couldn't be more oxymoronic. Um, <laughs> honestly, the longer you're on them, the worse it gets. Right. The point, and they're super addictive. Getting off them was oh. difficult, really difficult. And they make you physically sick when you come off them. Swishing sounds in your head and all sorts of madness. Um, not good. I don't recommend those to people. There's better ways not to be depressed. Um, right. But, yeah, I've, um, I've found the whole mental health aspect of um, just, yeah, lifting the cloud. Um, and... Now I found it really easy just to avoid things that are avoidable. The things that are avoidable in life, avoid them. And um, the things that are good, grab onto those, gravitate towards those. And it's very much easier now to see the differences in all of those things because life isn't really black and white. It's all shades of grey and mm -hmm. you've got to choose the template you want. And um, the biggest benefit I've found of keto is the mental health side mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time and doing this. I think uh, the people on my channel are going to love love to hear this story, and uh, and it's going to be motivating for other people. So I, I yeah, I hope so. Sorry, sorry you had to go through this hell to kind of get your body back, but uh, you know, it was uh, good it back. <laughs> yeah, I did, and I'm quite happy about it. So, um, yeah. and so yeah, thank you, um, thank you for sharing the knowledge and the keto community for 
um, inspiring me with just some positive comments. And um, and so thank you, everyone. It's, um, it's oh. been a trip and we'll continue down on this bus because it's a good one. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Well, thank you. And uh, have a, I don't even know. It's probably midnight or later right now. It's no, it's just gone sun, sunrise, nine oh, in the okay. morning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're Great. all good. Awesome. We're going to get this day later on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll send you uh, this video uh, when we put it live in a couple of days. Yes, yeah, sweet. Okay. Oh, Dr. Bird, lovely chatting. Have a good day. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers.